Being comfortable with being uncomfortable. The thought of it is even kind of weird. Whether it's school, food, religion, we're so quick to not giving things a chance. Humans are like animals away from home. We instantly go back to what we know. But why wouldn't we though? It's the only life we come to know. That used to be me. Until I was challenged to be different which forced me to be uncomfortable. It was the best decision I've ever made. The places around the world I've been, the people I've met, the series that I've created. None of it would have been possible had I not tried new things. But what holds people back is the fear of failure, the spirit of laziness. Most of the time we're in our own heads. We all run into obstacles. Feels like you can't move on. And it's impossible to progress further if something doesn't change. So now I'm headed back home. Departing out of downtown San Francisco. It's been about two months since I seen Christian and I got no clue if he's been working. The main reason we're meeting up is we're going on a little vacation. Headed out the country for a few days. And of course this trip wouldn't be possible without basketball. It's actually kind of perfect. Christian hasn't been getting the results he's looking for. There's always a reason for that. I need to know what's holding him back. There could be a number of problems. Or maybe it's just him. I do know one thing though. I'm going to get to the bottom of it. Man, where do I start? There's only one thing standing between you and mastering basketball. All right, this is a good place right here. 10,000 hours. I'm going to start this off and right. This world, no pity. You're in I the land in the with Never Devin Williams. This, this is world, episode no six. You're in the land in the ghetto, with Devin Never Williams. City. Back in LA, Price High School. These guys are high schoolers, so every now and then, I throw them a bone, let them play against Big Bro, but at the end of the day, I put the kids to sleep around 8, and they'll do almost anything they can to fight them, but almost don't count, it's just target practice. If you kept up with the last episode, I told you about the master that wasn't caught on film, Kinda look like this. It ain't nothing new. I'm still on my Uncle Drew. What makes this fun is Chris thinks he's gonna beat me every time we play. But him and his boys got a long ways to go. I ain't ready to get this gym up yet. I move at my own pace. I play like twice a month. Never work out. I eat a lot. I edit videos. It's the life to me. I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, my time is coming. But not today, though. Today, it just felt like I was getting up shots. And if I'm being honest, I never could shoot in high school or college. I feel uncomfortable shooting wide open shots at the three point line. I try to hide it behind my speed and my handle. 
but the old head saw right through that. It never bothers me that I didn't make it, but it does confuse me how I learned how to shoot after I was done. I can't tell you what happened, or what finally clicked. I don't really care though. All that's important to me is that I can teach others how to shoot better than me. Having a jumper comes in handy. It gives you that confidence. But I wasn't worried about teaching these dudes today though. Just wanted to send everybody home with sunglasses. Not gonna lie, there's days like this I kinda miss hooping. But not that much though. I'm a competitor, and what really motivates me is competing. No matter what it is. Yeah, my game might not be that pretty. And I'm not that good. But my job ain't to play no more. It's to train it. That's my passion. I wanna train until I'm dead. Not where I'm going. You gotta go. I, I, start, I got away from saying my players because the thing with me is I believe it takes a village to raise a child, like I said in my other videos. And, you know, I can't do all this by myself. I'm not going to pretend to know everything there is to know about lifting weights. So I, bring, I brought Tyrese in, and, you know, I know he knows what he's doing. You know, he went through the whole program at Washington where they were lifting up there and doing their thing. And, you know, you don't really forget stuff like that. We're not, I'm not always going to be here in the weight room with Chris, but at the same time, I just want him to be able to know what it's like before he gets there, know what that D Division one, because that's what we're aiming for. We're not, we're not aiming for nothing less. You know, if he gets there, then he gets there. But, you know, I want him to know what that type of workout is like. This is Tyrese Brashear. I put him in charge of getting players stronger and faster. Tyrese is trustworthy, he works hard, and most importantly, he always shows up early. I only like working with people like this. And if my business grows more successful, it'll be because of people like him. Tyrese motivates me, because he was headed to the NBA. His journey was cut short by an enlarged heart. He'll never be able to build his heart rate up again, or he could risk his life. He got every reason to be depressed. Because basketball was all we knew. But you either quit on life or paint your own future. So what I'm saying, like, so when you go to college and you guys are working out, especially lifting, you guys are gonna be matched up with the person you guys are gonna be going at in practice. It's still a team, it's still a team environment, but you guys are trying to push each other to get the championship. It's not, all right, let's just, let's just go get a quick 30 minute session in and be cool like every everything that you guys do oh. for basketball is for a championship it's not yeah just like oh you go through the motion and knock yeah. it out of the way because that's how you got season going though uh oh well you know uh, I'm, never roll. Okay. I'm not trying to be too, 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 too loud i'm not trying to be quiet either it's just like we're just there and that's how you end up with a 500 record like six thirty seven are you not flexible enough to do this if you're not you flexible enough it's to do bad. that you're bad it's, no, it's bad. Hold up, I got you. <laughs> to, these are quick sets too. Come on, Chris. <sighs> are you? All right, touch your toes from there. Huh? Touch your toes from where? I can't do it. You guys can't touch your toes. I can't. Keep straight. Go. Okay, go from where wherever your back is. Your back is still on the ground. <laughs> touch your toes. You gotta do stretch it. That's as high as you can get. Did you drop all legs? 
<laughs> we was all arms. <laughs> You know, they're laying out the ass. <laughs> 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 like my skin, my kid on the floor. <laughs> it's gonna be the shortest ad session ever. They heard all right here. Turn around, stretch it out. I like this ad. Right here. What set you on? Three. Come on, knock them out. These are quick. This is not a rest thing. When I first started working with Chris, he worked out with Kyle and Maddie for about three days. He had never worked that hard. Then he came to stay with me in the bay for about a week and we trained. Hadn't seen him for about five months after that. Came back to LA, worked with him for about two or three workouts, which was in episode three. Every now and then I visit LA and we would get in the gym. And then the next time we met up was episode five, which happened in the middle of the season. What I've learned during our time working out together is Chris will get in the gym, but when he gets there, his effort is bad. And if you look close at the video, you can probably see exactly what I'm talking about. He'll hit a wall and won't push past it. And he still shows up late for workouts. Nothing is consistent. And when you're small like he is, you can't have those issues. I can show a player how to work hard. I can teach him how to shoot, dribble, even IQ stuff. But I don't believe I can teach effort. I believe effort comes from deep down the side of a player. Like it's, 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 really it's super cutthroat, right? It's just a business. It's business right? after, after high school. Uh, it's right. big business. Yeah, so. You messing with your coach's paycheck. Right? You and messing you, with their paycheck, you're out of here. You messing with their food, you messing with their, their, their kids' tuition, you're out. You're out. If you can't produce, if, if you're a free uh, scholarship spot that they can fill with somebody that is going to be that person to help keep getting them checks in, you're out. You're out. Somebody else is in. And it's, it's nothing... No second thoughts about it. It's not like, oh, well, Chris is a nice guy, you know, like, no, it's not. Once you start messing with people with money, because that's what it is at, at the next level, it's all money, it's business. From what I've been taught, there's a few different aspects that go into basketball training. One is what I call skill development, which is probably the easiest one in my opinion. Stuff like cone drills, shooting, passing, the repetitive process. That's the easy part to me. Starting off, it was the only aspect I knew about. But it's actually a lot more that goes into it. You gotta put those cone drills in the game situations. Now understanding when to do things and why to do them, that falls more into player development. Then there's the mental aspect. I like to try and break a player mentally. It's not easy controlling your emotions, but if you can't control yourself, how are you gonna lead a team? Christian got a lot better at the skills part. He understands when and why to do things. But his mental aspect cancels all that out. He stops himself from being a better player. To date, he's been the hardest player to develop that I've ever worked with. He gets into games and kind of just blanks out. I've had him train with other trainers to try and help, but it's still the same. My biggest challenge is to find out why. Why aren't we getting the results we're looking for? That's one of the reasons why I'm here to find out that part. It's at the point where it's just problem solving. But the real question is, is it something I can fix? Or is it something that he has to fix? But I look at myself first, to see if I'm the problem. Okay, um, all right. You, your, your muscles are tight right now, like you played 40 games yesterday. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, so throughout the course of the season, pushing, pulling, dropping down, guarding, getting up, running full speed on defense, jumping, finishing layups. Like you don't give your muscles enough like stretch to fatigue itself out. Like your muscles are already like that. So that like in a ball flex, they're always working. Like your muscles are always working. Instead of being stretched out and like individual muscle fibers working, it's just a ball. And that ball is working. All the time. Can I grow? Huh? Can I grow? When I think about you growing, you know, you'll be a, a lot more explosive than what you are. Grow spurt. Grow spurt. Chris got a full beard. I doubt he's gonna grow. Sorry right, though. If you ain't gonna be tall, might as well get strong, right? Second weight room session, and he's kind of trying harder. 
That first session was hard to watch. I'm not gonna lie, I like where it's going. Everything is about form right now. He pretty much does everything wrong. Not about how much weight you lift at first. It's about doing everything correct. Everybody who comes through goes through this process. I call it the struggle bus. You always know who's on the struggle bus though. Cause they start making faces like this. Chris may be pretty small though. But he's actually pretty strong naturally. He's got the type of body to put on a lot of muscle. But only if he's consistent. One thing I ask players to do. Is once you get the form down. You need to push yourself. When you get to that point. The work ethic will translate right over to the basketball court. There's a lot of things that Christian has made habit of that drives me crazy. I get consumed with it and sometimes I can't even sleep. But at the end of the day, I just want him to do well in this world, whether it's in school or basketball. But the truth is, some people are going to learn the hard way. It may seem like I'm hard on them, but life is a lot harder than I can ever be. I know that firsthand, but regardless of how wrapped up I can get into one player, I'm trying to build something bigger than Christian and myself from the ground up. And you can only do that one step at a time. Today, I'm going to get one step closer. So I'm almost at the Ballers Life uh, place, and right now I need to call one of the guys that's really good at designing. He's been designing all my latest stuff and uh, really good at what he does. What's up, Marvin? Hey, so you, um, you asked if I had the final? Oh yeah, I got that. Oh, I the one you sent the email, right? Yeah. All right, yeah, I already sent it to the printer. You said what? I already sent it to the printer, so it's all good. Um, all right, right on. Thanks, bro. It's my first time, like, they just switched, like, buildings, so it's, like, my first time uh, seeing the whole warehouse or whatever they got, so it should be interesting. I always like seeing things grow, like, the whole business side of it, and it's pretty interesting. I know a lot of you are wondering about this, because I used to. Yes, Ballers Life has a factory. There's a lot of people involved with it, too. It's around-the-clock business. Mixtapes, clothing, etc. Ballers Life is no doubt an up-and-coming brand. They reached out to me about a position working with them. It was no way I could turn it down. Since then, they've been helping me make clothing. It's been helping me grow a lot quicker. I come up with the idea for the design, my friends design it, then Ballers Life does the rest of the work. As a kid, I wanted to make it to the NBA and have my own shoe. But honestly, what I'm doing now, it's kind of better to me. I came out with shirts, hoodies, and today I'm getting a chance to see how my socks are made. So the first thing you gotta do is just have like a blank canvas like you do with anything when you're printing. And basically what happens is you put it under a heat press and that heat press gets it so hot that it expands the fabric, the dye comes off this paper. It's like a special paper that you gotta use and it essentially goes into the fabric. So we're gonna set this in there for 60 seconds. Yeah, so right now it has to get hot enough for the dyes to really push off the paper and into the fabric. We like to do it around like 365 degrees so it sits under there for like 60 seconds and then pushes the inks into the fabric. So that's about that. Yeah. 
other side. We want it to be like an all-around design, so we gotta make sure it's lined up really well. One of the main reasons why we like to do everything here, like some people, as they see this, may, may think like, oh, like, why are they doing this stuff themselves if they have all this stuff here? One of the things that we like to do is like we like to preach like quality and going through someone else, you never know like how big they are, how much they're doing in their production. Like if they're, what if they're making stuff mainly for like promotion? And promotion, you don't care about quality, you just care about something coming out and it looks nice. So for us, we care about the quality and over the years, we've run into a lot of quality issues. So we wanna do everything ourselves now so that we can make sure that our customers and our friends are making sure that we're all getting the same amount of quality and that everything is coming out great. So that when you wash a shirt, the ink doesn't come off, stuff like that. So, and stuff like this where you can get an all around design on there because somebody else isn't gonna take the same type of care that I would. It wasn't too long ago when I was that guy at home watching Baller's Life years find us a hoop mixtape all day. I didn't really have anything else to do because I didn't know what I wanted out of life. It took me to get out of my comfort zone, which was in front of a TV or a computer, and get out and make something of myself. And now I'm working with some of those people whose video I used to watch. I see people walking around with gear that I helped put together. And it's bigger than me now, because I started a movement. I want to make hard work on and off the court cool now. I want people to think it's cool to get an education, instead of sagging pants, trap music, drugs, being in the hood, and shooting people. And Baller's Life is helping that. It's also dope watching Match Dream take off. The Ball is Life All-American game is coming up, and with the new ruling, big name players will be participating this year. And nothing that's happening for Ball is Life right now would be possible if Matt didn't put together the team that he has now. Maybe we can't help change the world, but if a few people get something out of it, we know that we did our job. So our game has been real cool because it like kind of repped all the guys who didn't make it to the big games like Jordan Brand or McDonald's. Whereas this year, we can get those same type of kids. So not only are we keeping the same feel to it, we will still get like the local guys who didn't make the big game, mm -hmm. but we're also getting bigger name players to come out. To That's gonna be so, big. Cause like each year we've had like a breakout player. So like last year we had Zach Levine. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of the year, he was ranked like lottery pick. Now he's like late. He killed him, you, Shola. And uh, he did real well last year in the game. Got a lot of pubs in the game. So it was cool to have him there. Just being able to like give a guy the type of exposure is fun for us. And taking the guys to like Universal Studios, and mm -hmm. letting them experience like being out here in California, like that's their biggest thing. Some of these guys have never seen the beach or anything like that before, so it's kind of cool to be able to watch them and see like their reaction. Get them away from home and stuff. everything. That's cool. I mean, it's gonna be a pretty crazy game. <laughs> It's weird, all this is starting because of a basketball. 
everything in my life, like the last few times I've gotten on a plane was because of a basketball. A lot of meals that I've had for the last like few weeks were because of a basketball. And my girlfriend, I met, she, she's a hooper. I met her through basketball. My, a lot of my friends, Tyrese, met them through, like we connected because of basketball. The relationship I have with my father, man, we connect through basketball. And, you know, it, I, it sounds repetitive, but you know, it just goes to show you how powerful basketball really is. And, you know, they, I'll try hard not to say it, but ball really is life, man. Our lives begin as a blank canvas, and over time what goes on there is inspired by our imagination and painted with our actions. The decisions that we make, the friends we keep around, the situations that we put ourselves in, determine whether we get a work of art. We all want that pretty picture and the recognition that comes with it. The money, big houses, nice cars, trips across the globe. I'm not afraid to admit it. I want every last bit of it. But there's more than life to that. I want to leave an impact. To the social media world, this life has become a mere trending topic. The workout selfies and hashtags actually don't make us better. The likes and retweets are as good as Monopoly money. The followers accumulated won't actually put the ball in the basket for you. I was born in 88, and this ain't how I came up. I still believe in hard work and doing it while nobody's looking. I think if Chris gets this mindset, he'll be more successful. But he's still on the path to getting himself uncomfortable. Just been a snorkeling, and now we're walking through Catalina Island. Chuck, you know, got some clothes, had to lay them, lay them out. Here, what's up? <laughs> Boom! Do yoga in the morning, a little cardio. You gotta rehydrate with your carbs after that, man. That's what it does. Cycle of life, right here, baby boy. <laughs> I never heard a loser talk so much. I really haven't. Nah, not one. I can't, I'm the one who caught the body. But that's the thing. Hoopers, real hoopers don't believe in moral victories. You just had a moral victory. You stink. You can't even beat me on unstable ground. I did. You stink. You, you stink. You can't even laugh.